Good evening and welcome to this webinar uh, about with GovReports and looking at the practice side of GovReports. Uh, my name is Ali Cochran and I'll be presenting for you um, tonight and showing you how you can get the most out of using the My Practice functionality within your GovReports subscription. Just a couple of housekeeping rules. You'll notice that you have a control panel on your screen there. Um, there is a little box there for you to pop in any questions through to people who will answer for you. Um, and if you, um, so we'll, we'll do that. And the first thing that I'm going to do though is I'm just going to send a brief message to you just to make sure that you can all hear me and see my screen. So give me a second. So that would have popped up and you should be able to hear me okay if you could just respond to that and just let me know so I'm making sure that people can hear. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Kerry and Derek. Fantastic. Wonderful. All right. Okay. At any time, if I get a bit loud, please let me know and, um, and I will... Um, try to speak a little bit softer because the microphone is quite sensitive. Okay, so most of you would be familiar with our Gov Reports and when you log into Gov Reports, you are presented first of all with your bird's eye view. And this gives you a very quick picture of your clients. And if you have um, other areas where you can move through, say, into my lodgements and look at the history, and you'll get the picture popping up on your screen. Now, normally, you'll get a little um, picture of what's been happening, what's been lodged, what hasn't been lodged. Um, on this one, it's my little sample one, so it's not showing um, a lot because I haven't done an awful lot in it, but you can see very quickly there the save reports, the lodge reports, etc. So it gives you a very quick breakdown there of the My Lodgements and so the, that bird's eye view has your clients, the authorised users, so you may have a licence but you may have employees or others who are authorised users on your account and that will be listed there as well and then it's broken down into the My Lodgements and My Practice area and we're going to focus tonight on the My Practice area but just to let you know of a few new features that have been added into the um, area in, in uh, Gov Reports. So one of the first things we have that's been set up is when we're working in the practice area, if I click on the My Practice, I'm going to take you there and we're going to have a look at our job screen. I'm just going to click on My Jobs very quickly. I'm going to click on the calendar first actually and just waiting for that screen to pop up. It's taking a little longer than I would like. It's, it's taking longer because of the heat, I'm sure. So when we click onto that calendar, we are presented with the calendar. Now, one of the new features that has come on recently into GovReports is the ability to integrate with Google Calendar. Now, to integrate with Google Calendar, you simply go to the My Practice and the Calendar and you tick that Google box. Now, when you tick that Google box, you will be prompted to ask you if you want to connect. So if I tick that for a moment and I'll tick it back again, it should come up and ask me if I want to connect to my Google Calendar. Once I do that, it will go out and ask me which Google account or I would like to link it to. So which Gmail account or which Google account would I like to link it to? It's just taking a little while to think there. It's okay, it's there. The other way you can also access that is going through the settings at the top and having a look at your practice settings. And you'll find in your practice settings you also have the ability to connect to the Google Calendar. And you'll see here that it's already connected. Now you follow those prompts to connect. Now you can also disconnect if you want to, but just make sure that when you do that, 
you go into your um, Gmail account, into the settings, into the third party apps and make sure that the connection has been removed because if you want to go and reconnect it later on, if it hasn't removed that, it will have a few difficulties and that happens sometimes, not often, but it happens. The other new feature that we've looked at is what's been added in are notifications. So you'll notice in the top right of my screen where the little bell is that you can see straight away that there's a notification there for me. I'm just... Um, and I can highlight on this and I can see that it's showing me that there was a successful lodgement of this particular event. Now, those lodgement, uh, those notification settings in your practice are by default turned on. You can go into your settings, once again, into the practice settings and go into your notification setting and you can customise what you do and don't want to receive notifications on. So the sort of notifications that you're going to get uh, in your Gov reports are any documents that are signed or declined through your digital authentication will uh, be notified. When reports are sent for lodgement through the queue, after the process is complete and the status will show as an alert in your notifications. And if you're using the timesheet functionality within the My Practice area, when the timesheet status has been changed, then a notification will also appear. Now you also will have reminders so that when an event or job is added to your calendar and set for a reminder, and I'm just going to go back to our calendar now, So a little bit slow there. So going back to my calendar, if I set up an event, a job or a task, and I put a reminder on it, then those reminders are going to pop up in a window and they can be snoozed. So I've just got... Um, calendar coming up now. Gee, there we go. So in here, I have the ability to turn my reminders on when I've got my task set up. So even in these ones, once again, this one has been set up already, so I've got nothing on the reminders here. But when I can do it, um, I'm able to then put that reminder on. Now I'm just going to very quickly pop into Gmail, if it lets me go to the right one. I'm hoping it will go to the right account and not the wrong one. That's not the one I want. I just want to show you that in my calendar in, in Gmail, which is once again loading, if I expand my calendar out, you can see here that what I had in my calendar here, my test event, is appearing here on my calendar, so it's fed through. And likewise, if I've turned reminders on. So the, the default snooze for the reminders is 10 minutes. So let's go back to our um, Gov reports and just take a very quick look here, once again, at the overview of our screen in the My Lodgements area. So if I was to go to my um, dashboard, my bird's eye view, and wait for my screen, oh my goodness, it's got slow. The very first thing I see, as you, I mentioned, was that dashboard. Very quickly shows you in here the saved reports, lodged reports, what's been done, gives you some statistics, has some due dates and reminders for you, 
and the My Lodgements is broken down into these key areas. So when you click on the Outstanding Reports, you'll get a list of all of those where you've set up Outstanding Reports to appear. So let's look at My Practice in a little bit more detail now. And as I mentioned, My Practice is free with your QuickBooks Online, uh, QuickBooks Online, with your Gov Reports subscription. Now the My Practice area is broken down into jobs, calendar, time billing, reports and reminders. We're going to focus primarily, we've talked a little bit about the calendar already, we're going to focus primarily on the jobs area in our, web, in our webinar tonight. So when we break down the jobs, you can see it's broken down into My Jobs, which is a list of the jobs that you have. So when I click on the My Jobs, it will populate with all those jobs that are on my list. Oh my goodness, I can't believe how slow it is. It's never this slow. And you can see these are all the jobs that I currently have in this, in this system, in this practice. The schedule jobs are those jobs that have already been set up and you can see the schedule for them. So it shows you the status of their activity. So if I was to click on that schedule job, I can go into that and I can edit it. So if I found that the frequency had changed or it might be that when I went to the next screen and had a look at tasks that had been assigned, there might be an additional task or there may be an additional item in a checklist. I could go through and do that and I could save those changes. So I can make adjustments to those scheduled jobs. The My Tasks. These are the tasks that are already set up within an existing job. So these are all the individual components that are in a job. They are all tasks that are part of a job and within the tasks you have a checklist. And then we have our templates and they're broken down into four areas. We have the default template, the custom task template, the job template and the recurring, task, uh, the recurring job template. So let's deal with each individually. So let's take a look at the default task template. Now the reason I'm going to go through this stage and take you through the tasks first is that you want to establish, if you, I've found that if you establish the tasks first and then create the jobs later, you can copy those tasks into the jobs and makes it much easier. So Gov Reports come, and the My Practice part comes with a number of default task templates that you can use or you can use as a basis for development of your own. So for example, if I go into the default task templates, you can see there, there's a batch preparation checklist. There's an end of year guide and a payroll end of year. Now you, have, you can see the actions here where you can actually attach them to jobs you may already have, this particular template, or you can clone it. So let's go into this one and just take a very quick look at it so we can talk about it and then we'll look at how we can create a cloned one and how we can create a new task. You can see here that this is the BAS preparation checklist. This is the tasks. You can see them all here. So each of these headings in the bold here is your task. And each of these individual tick boxes are the checklist items. So you can see all the bits and pieces that are in here in this list. Now if I want to use this and create this for a specific one, so I might want to go through and create a BAS checklist for my MYOB0 and QBO clients because they may have different reports in it, they may have different settings, so I may want to amend my checklist. I can do that by simply clicking on the clone button. When I clone it, I'll be tempted to, uh, prompted to enter in a name. Um, and I might just call this one quarterly bears or monthly bears, I'll do it. Bears and we'll do it for um, zero. 
And like if I've got members in my account, other authorised users, I have the option there to save it. So now I have this one called monthly BAS zero. Now I can now add new tasks in or I can edit the existing tasks that I have. So you see here for some reason this has tripled. I don't know why, it duplicated and I have no idea why it's done in this instance. So I'm just going to simply go through very quickly and I can delete those. So you can see how you can easily go through. I can add a new task and put it in there and add the checklist to it. So in here it might be um, and in your checklist you might put um, the different components. Um, and save that and that's added another task in my checklist now in my um, in my custom task template so that will be probably down towards the bottom as you see if there are things that I don't want there I can delete them I can also go through and on each individual line here later on once I've saved this further I can go through and edit what's written written there so you can see how you can use that cloning just to make it a little bit easier and utilise some of the already um, set up tasks within the default task templates. Now, once again, I can go through and click on my edit here. I can change the name. I can now, the next stage it's going to go to, and is asking me if I want to attach it to any specific jobs. Now this is assuming that I have jobs already set up and if I go to attach it to a job, my jobs will appear on the list here and I simply would click the one that's relevant, which none of them are, and then click the attach. Any questions on that before we move on to creating a new task template? I'll let Tana answer the question at the end of financial year. Checklist is the only one some people can see. I may have other ones in there. I've, I'm not sure. In the default ones. Um, okay. Yep. There are questions. So do you, do you mind that we leave these questions to the end of the, the sessions? Or do you want us to answer? No, Are no. That, that's that's fine. I've just, I've just noticed it's there and I just didn't know yep. whether you'd see because I noticed the other ones are gone. Okay, so let's look at creating a brand new task template. We want to create one from scratch. Now, one of the things I want to mention to you is when we did that cloning of that task template, when we named it, it created a new uh, task template here and it put it into our custom task templates. Now, the custom task templates are ones that you have either created yourself or customised from a cloned one. So when we go to our um, templates, our main screen here, we click on the new at the top, give our template a name, Save that. I'm going to go back into it in a minute. Now I could have simply, well, it's going to prompt me now to add my new tasks in. So now we're going to add a new task in. So we go whatever the task may want to be. Um, check for the following. That's the task name. Checklist would be to add things like purchase of assets um, 
new lease. I'm just picking things up to sort of you know put in. So that's I'm going to save that task. Now I'm going to create a new task. I'm just doing a couple of little tasks. Um, reconciliations checklist. Bank reconciliation is complete. I'm going to go through and edit that because I didn't finish adding things in. Excuse me for a minute, I'm just going to mute while I cough. And um, you know, credit card Rex complete. Save those. I can also, within the actual body here itself, add the additional items um, in typing down here. So that adds it as well. But it will move it to the top of the list. Whereas if you edit it um, in here, Um, you'll be able to get it in the better order and you can reorder it. Mm. So if we look here, I might want to move that down further so I can move things around. So as I said, once you've created your template and saved it, the next stage would be to attach it to the jobs or if you're creating a series of templates, then you can go back and attach them to the jobs at the end, which is what I tend to do. I tend to create all my templates first, go through and, and work out what it is that I want and then I go and attach them to the specific jobs. And as I mentioned, you can simply edit here, which will edit the name, or you can edit in each of the task areas and the checklist areas. So now let's look at, we've created some tasks there. So now if I go into my custom task template, you see my different tasks that I have here. And now you've created your tasks, you might want to create your job templates. So when we look at the job templates, you have two lots of job templates here. You have your single job template and you have your recurring job template. So the single job template allows you to create a single activity, a single job activity. It may be a one-off, it may be a rescue job, it could be anything. And it's not recurring in its nature. Whereas the recurring job template that's pretty self-explanatory, it is recurring. So if you click onto the job template here, and if I was to click on new, you'll see here there is nothing about it being a recurring situation. We're going to set up a recurring job template. So when we click on the recurring job template, and then click on new, you'll notice that it's moved here, it's underscored in the line here. It hasn't opened, you know, it's opened a different screen. So if I move between them, it just moves along here very easily. So when I click new, you'll notice now that the recurring information is in here. So once again, you're going to name your template. So um, we're going to call, I'm going to call this the quarterly as preparation. And I'm going to choose my frequency. I might say my start date is the 1st of Jan. I would share it if I had any other ones in this one, but I don't. If I'm uh, utilising the billing functionality within the practice, which I don't at this stage, you could choose to do it here based on job hours, client hours or staff hours. The duration in days, how long you expect this job to take, so it sets up a start and finish time for you so it shows jobs when they're overdue so you know might say 15 days or because it's not due till the end of February because we have the extension I might say 30 days 
in this example. It just depends. Then I have my priorities, high, medium and low. I always make everything high. That's just me. And the status at the moment will be not started because we want to, you know, if it's a brand new template and we haven't started the job yet, it will be not, start, not started. And I don't want to set up necessarily a recurring job template that has anything other than that category or you might be ready to start or whatever it is, one of those two. Once again, you have the ability to manage this and allocate the staff to it. Then we go to our next screen. When I click the button, come on. It's getting a little bit hot, maybe. Who knows? Give me five seconds. Oh, me. I'm not reading. I forgot that down the bottom you also need to put in, I do this more often than not, um, the template name as well. Then when you go next, your screen should work. So now you have the option here to add tasks in and create new checklists from scratch. Or if you've done the task in advance like I encourage you to do, then you can select an existing task from your custom task templates or one of the default ones. And from that list, pick up the one that you want and copy it. Now you'll see that the tasks have come in and you can save that. So now we have our recurring jobs here and you can see the scheduled date. So now when I go back to the My Jobs here, you can see I've got client names. So how do I get the client names associated with my jobs? Well, from that main recurring job template here, When I'm in the actual template itself, I have that option to attach it to my specific clients. And I can tick them all or one or whoever it applies to. And when I do that, it associates that recurring job with this task here. So now if I go to my schedule jobs, I should have more than weekly wages showing. I have, haven't attached anything to it, that's why. So now when I go back to my job, attach it to a client, it's now attached to that client. And when I go to my scheduled jobs now, you'll see that my quarterly BAS, uh, these are my schedules. So if, if at any time, um, say a client changes, they might change software and you need to use a different checklist or they might have some other differences, you can go into that recurring job because that is associated um, with you know, lots of clients here. And each time you attach it to a client, in your schedule jobs, and we'll go back and just to demonstrate it. I'm going to attach it to my girl designs as well. So now in my schedule of jobs, you'll see that it creates a recurring for each of those. So I can actually go in and make any changes to this specific schedule related to this specific client and it will affect all the upcoming schedules. It won't affect the ones that it automatically created from the system. And you'll see now, here they are. Now you can sort your schedule in by deadline and when those dates become overdue, they will highlight in red for you. 
So the next stage, of course, is working through the actual jobs themselves. How do you do that? Well, in, um, in here, the way that I do it, and it's up to personal preferences, but I have my jobs sorted by deadline. And as I complete the tasks or as my staff complete the tasks, they go through and check them off and I can mark them as completed and then I can mark this component as completed. Now sometimes there's an awful lot of components here and you don't necessarily want to go through and tick them all. So what I do is I do a shortcut by going through and marking all the individual checklist components off I make a note of my job number, two, four numbers. I go now to my tasks and I look up that job code and in one hit I can mark them all as complete rather than going edit, complete, edit, complete. I just focus on my checklist but not on the tasks. And so now that job will disappear once I go through the final stage here and mark it in this section, or I could have even done that from the main screen, which I can, drop this down and choose that. In this case, it's completed. So you'll see there's a number of options there. And if I drop these down, things like if I'm waiting for a, an authorization, it will change a different colour. And when you change it to completed, it will go green, or when it's lodged, it will go green. Any questions on that so far? Did you want to answer any questions on that so far before I move on anywhere, Tiana? There are a few questions, and I think... Um, we can cover it now. Um, the first question is from Therese. Uh, she doesn't seem to have the default template uh, on her account, only one template. That's the end of financial year checklist. Um, Sandeep, do you mind? Uh, I think this is technology related. Default templates, usually there at the moment there are three um, and we are adding more possibly later in this year, but this is current. And of course, you can clone them. Um, Sandeep? Uh, yes, Yana. So currently, there are only a few default templates. So as per the schedule, we are going to work on enhancing the template uh, features in the OPM. So we'll be adding more features to the templates, task and but job templates. I think the question is, we only have one template at the moment. That doesn't sound right. Uh, that's only, there is only one task template at the moment. We, have, we do have three job templates and one task template. Oh. Okay. So mine is an old, obviously, is different. I don't know why, but yes. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, mate. Uh, so it is, uh, Therese, we are adding all more templates onto, onto OPM and that will be throughout uh, the year and we'll be updating you as, as they come out on live. Um, the next question is, um, can you change a job template from Vicky Garner? Can you change a job template to a recurring job temp template? No. No. Um, you, at the moment, um, if you do a new one here, as far as I can see, there is no ability to make it recurring. What you can do is if you've got that job template, um, hopefully you will have those tasks set up so that when you set up the recurring, you can copy it across. But um, when you do the new one here, it does not give you any opportunity to convert an existing template across at all. It only allows you to copy the task. It copies uh, allows you to copy task templates. So job template, no. Okay. Uh, questions from Melissa. It seems like there are a lot of steps. Is there a video on this we can review? Uh, 
uh, we do have help guide to break it down into small steps, but definitely the webinar is probably be the best options to to go about it. We ha do have these sessions recorded, and we have earlier sessions that uh, show you how to get started and so forth. So it, they are accessible on the website, uh, Mel. And um, yeah, we'll. And I've also done that um, PDF. So if people want to have a look at the steps that I've put in this just as a guide. Once you start getting used to it, um, you know, to, it, it's, it's when you're first setting up Practice Manager, Office Practice Manager, it's a little time consuming. But once you've set it up, more or not, you are simply taking an existing task template or job template and, and attaching clients to it. That's more often than not what happens. And um, that's why I focus on setting up the task templates first um, before do, doing the jobs and attaching them to clients. Okay, so the next question is, um, when you create a job here, does it feed back into Google Calendar? Uh, no, at the moment it is it will be filled into Go, Go Reports calendar. So I'll make note of that, Tiana. So to add oh, into the it's, it's integrated, it would be there, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. If it's connected to your to if you connect um, Go Reports calendar to your Google Calendar, it would definitely shows up. So let me just have a look now because I created a couple of jobs there that are scheduled. Mm. So mm. they have been created today. And I'm just going to go into my Gmail account again, provided I find the right one again. It's not the one. I know it's not the one, but I'll change in a second. Uh, going to my calendar. So you can see in here, on the 31st, these ones have popped up. I don't think the, the quarterly best ones weren't there before. Now they I'm just have to see if they're there or not. I can't see them on here yet. Sandeep, that might be something else <clears throat> in the right calendar, which I'll say yeah. Um I know that if I set uh, an event in here. Uh, Ali, at the moment, at the moment yeah. when you create a job, it will yeah. be. I mean, it will be shown only on the Go Reports calendar. When it is integrated, we are not showing on the Google calendar. What I can do is I can add this to the next work item, so it will be available soon. That would be fantastic. Oh, <laughs> then okay. we can have a calendar. Yep. And the next question is. Um, can I import clients and task list to go report using CSV? That's a sandy question. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Sorry, what is well, that? Well, I mean, I'm assuming that. Yeah, I don't can, know. He yeah, that. Can I can can um, can I import clients and task list to go report using CSV? Uh, you can import a uh, client list using CSV, not that task at the moment. Okay. Does Lodgman attach to the jobs? From yes. Amazon? No. no. The, the Lodgments are in their own section in the Lodgment section up the top. The pra Office Practice Manager is purely for practicing the management. The Lodgment section contains all the information about your Lodgments. Uh, what it does, however, in your clients, however, you will see uh, if you look at your specific client, which I'm just going to now, you will see both the lodgements and the jobs in the my clients area on the specific clients. Once it decides to wake up. Can be thankful that the neighbour didn't decide to do his construction tonight, though. It's very slow. Yeah. So yeah. meanwhile, I I would like to add a point onto that, Ali. So when you, so 
when you prepare a job, it can be linked with a report as well, the lodgement report. Oh, good. You'll have to show me that one. I don't know that one. So, there they oh, are. Yeah. so when you prepare the report, so when you go to my lodgements or save report. Yeah. Yes. And click on any one of the report. Yes. And there you go. You can see a attach existing job or create job. Wait. No, just oh, I see. down the bottom. Oh, look at that. Bottom. It's been staring Paragon. at me in the face for so long <laughs> and I haven't even noticed it. So, so there you go. So yeah, that's another option. So I haven't utilized that option yet, but I, they certainly now uh, has opened my eyes and I'll certainly be looking at that. Yeah. Okay. So okay. the next question: Are there plans to integrate with um, OPM? Integrate OPM with uh, with Outlook. This is a very popular um, uh, request uh, from us, and our team is currently analyzing, and um, that is on the plan. Okay. And the next questions uh, from and. Currently, we have templates. Can they be attached to and or loaded into Practice Manager? I think we just answered that uh, earlier. Okay, is it a two-way push from Pauline? Not too sure what that means. Yeah. Is it push in and push out? No, like I'm assuming that into other systems. Then Deep. Mm, so. The lodgement section is uh, integrated with other softwares for push in and push out, two way integration, but not the OPM. Okay. Um, the next question I can see a lot of entries in the calendar that I haven't put there, uh, etc. Seems like it is picking up other people's calendar. Uh, nope. That's the same. Yeah, that's a technical, Stacey. Uh, that might be, we might uh, assist you offline on that one, uh, if possible. And I loved the next question from Pauline. I love to integrate with Google. I, if I create an event in Google Calendar, does it just show, could it create a job if required? Mm. That's more technical than me too. Mm. No, not at the moment. Even to job, there is no link here. No? So I'll make note of that. That's a good thing. It's yep. a great idea. We can do that. Are there plans to integrate with practice emissions? Um, that is the first time we get that request. So um, uh, Pauline, we'll, we'll, we'll just wait and see if other clients are looking at it. Um, you know, if it's really popular, we will consider that. The next question, are there plans to integrate with ICAL? Yeah, for the, for the Mac. Mac. Yeah, for Mac. So there's iCalendar for Macs. I have a uh, Mac. I'm working on a Mac, as you can see. Um, yep. And that would be, you know, if, if people are using iCal instead of uh, Outlook um, or any other calendar system, is that an option that might come up in the future? That would be a great option. Yeah. Okay, we'll take note of that. Um, so that's all the questions. So apologies um, to all the others and uh, Anna Lee, um, you, yeah, that's all the questions we have for now. Can we continue? All right. All right. So um, down the bottom here, you'll see that you have a number of reports that you can run. Now, obviously, this will depend on whether or not you are utilizing some of the functionalities around the time billing and managing your staff time within here. Now, I don't utilize this section at the moment, but you'll also be able to extract a an invoice report based on when you went in, if you remember when we set up these specific jobs. Let me just go back to that job again, that report jobs. Um, when we were setting up our templates, um, if you remember when we, I'll just go into one of the job templates that's in here. We had the option whether we chose time billing, staff, etc. So um, in in this job here, when we opened it up, you'll see here um, we had an ability for the billing method to be done here. So this would be based on staff hours. So if I did it based on staff hours, um, then 
obviously there is a way to record that. I have not utilised that side of it. I don't know if Sandeep or uh, Tiana can shed any more light on it, but certainly if you've done that, then your invoice report could be generated based on the time that you have spent with your particular clients. So it's just loading a report, so there's nothing there for me at the moment. So, so you can see that there. So that's one functionality that I'm not yet using, but I would think that that would be great if you have no other, if you're utilising it fully to that degree. Now, the other thing um, with the calendar, um, aside from the fact that it's integrated with Google, um, you can see here that you have the ability to look at a day work week, month, agenda and timeline. So if we look at it at the monthly that I've got now, you can see very clearly the status that things are at. If they are, um, <clears throat> I have no idea what the colour, different colours are aside from the public holidays. I'm assuming this relates back to um, the fact that it's completed, it's green, whereas on this one, No, it's completed too, but I, it, it could be the priorities. No, it's not the priorities. I'm not 100% sure about that, Sandy. Can you tell me what the difference is with the colours there? Hello? Oh, sorry, Annie. I'm That's on right. Is there, <laughs> is there it, a reason it is. behind the colours? I mean, I look at it overall as a planning tool. Yeah, so it's differentiate the type of uh, events. For example, there are events, jobs, and the I mean the events from the Google Calendar. So yep. that's how it, the colors are differentiated. That's the blue one. Yeah, that's the, that's this one here. That's the Google Calendar yep. one. Okay, and once again, there's your timelines, etc. So there's different ways to look at things. So I I look at it on a monthly, so it gives me an overview to be able to plan the schedule very quickly. Um, at what's happening within my practice, what I'm going to be assigning um, and how I can utilise that the best way, utilise the time the best way. Now, when we look at these jobs too, there's other tools you have in here. So if you are looking for a specific client, if you had, like I do, pages and pages of jobs because it's based on clients, if I want to look client, there's no reason why I can't use the functionality here of looking up the client name and displaying those ones. So if I'm looking for a specific job, I can just see those ones related to the My Girl design and go and do what I need to do within those. The same thing um, when we look at the scheduled jobs. Um, in here, once again, you have another drop-down list of filtering and you have down here the ability to, you don't even have to go through the different screens. You could do it through here and look at the different tasks. You might want to look at your tasks, for example. And when I search for that, then all my tasks will appear. So it saves me moving from, from bit to bit. I can utilise this top section here. And here I can see the status of them all. So once again, I can then filter my statuses so that I can see all the ones that are not started within a certain date range so that they pop up very quickly so I can see what's happening um, with the job so I can see that, you know, this one's been done. How come this one hasn't been done? You know, things like that. If I have schedule and deadline dates, they will also appear here for me. Um, now, what else was there that I was going to say? I think I've pretty well covered most of what I was going to say this evening. Tiana, is there anything else you wanted me to cover in particular? That's the way that I utilise it the best. I use this every single day. It is normally open on my desk here. I haven't done it because so I, otherwise I would get confused when I was demoing this one compared to my one. But it is always open on my desk. It is there every single day. It's the second thing I come to after I turn the timesheet on um, and it I go through and I look at that the first thing in the morning so I can plan my day and that is where it is a, a really useful tool. And I don't think I've got anything else if, unless there's other questions. Oh, 
Um, I think for now that uh, I think I'm quite, um, I think you cover most of it. Um, there are a few more questions coming through. So I, in the meantime, while I'm trying to think about the, the questions, uh, or the things that you have not if you haven't covered, we we'll go through the questions again. And uh, if anyone else has questions, we'll, we'll answer that as well. I think the next question, does billing integrate with zero QBO, MYOB, i.e. invoices raising the reports transferred to this system? Alison, at the moment, we, we haven't had any plan to do that uh, uh, as yet. Sandeep, do, you, do, we have, uh, do we have anything on the, on the horizon that you know of? Mm, not really, Tiana. So we don't have any plans. I'll add to the wish list and we'll analyze on that for, for the future releases. Thank you. Uh, and the next question, can I edit the schedule or deadline and deadline dates for start dates from the calendar screen? You can do it actually. Um, you could, If you click double click on the um, the the job in the calendar, you can edit it there and change the schedule date and the deadline date. You can also, um, just I'll show my screen so I can show you. Just hold so on. in here, if I double click, you can just see here, I can edit. And you can see I can go and change my schedule date, etc. I can also do the same thing in the My Jobs. I can go through here and drop down and choose my dates as well. Any others? Let me just have a look. Yep. The next questions that I have is the, um, how can I add a client? How can I add clients that only, that I only do consulting work for and not bad services from Vicky? Well, you, when you're in, in the My Clients, you can simply add them here. Um, they will appear in the My Lodgements thing, but if they've, they've, one of the things with the My Clients area here but just go into a client and I'll, I'll demonstrate. So when I go into an actual client here, just go back in here, I want to go into here, this one for example. In here, there is an option in here for the outstanding reports where where you is you would pull information about BASs and that. If I don't turn that functionality on, then it's not going to know that it's that and it's just going to be, you know, here's, here's the jobs that is coming up at the moment. So it's just going to have in here the jobs that are relevant to the consulting work or whatever work you may be doing for them. It doesn't necessarily have to be for your BAS clients. You can utilise it for whatever. Um, I, I What did I do? I did something recently, it's a one-off job for someone and it was basically um, evaluating a system for them and I basically took all the notes and information, set up my checklist of what things I wanted to research before I could come back with them with an answer and I just set the client up and there's no, it's it's not going to go anywhere with my BAS, I don't need to do a lodgement for them so I haven't got any connection, um, you know, with it the end to the ATO, I'm not pulling any other information to do that. Okay. Um, and the next question is from uh, Alison, and this is a question for Sandeep. Can the logout be extended when you are using using it in the, the office? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I heard that one, Sandeep. So now you just have to say yes. <laughs> So at the moment we have set the default settings for that, that's 20 minutes. If you keep it your account ideal for a while, for the security reasons, we will be lo uh, log out that account. That's only for the security reasons. So... If this steps so away, perhaps we can increase it to half an hour maybe? Uh, no, no, Tiana. For security reasons, we can't do that. Okay. As security uh, protocol. Understand. Yeah, I understand the security protocol. It's just frustrating, but it, I mean, if if you've got something like um, a password system on on your system and you have it open whilst you're working there and you log out of it when you walk away from your desk, that you can log in very quickly, back in very quickly without having to remember hundred million passwords. Yeah. But, yeah. 
And the next question, so I think it's also for Sandeep, is there a functionality available now or in the future to, or to be able to forward an email from a client and have the email become a task in OPM? Currently, we don't have that. So we need to do some analysis on that, Diana. I'll add uh, to my list. Thanks, mm. Therese. And the next question, would this series of webinar be uh, likely to be available or it's, uh, yes, it's will, it is recorded and it will be uh, post, will be automatically sent to you post the webinar. One, I think one day is scheduled at the moment. Otherwise, you can also access to it on the website. We will post it on the website early next week after editing. Um, email to task would be great. Okay. So how does the timer work? if it shuts down after 20 minutes? Good questions from Kim. Sandeep? So when the system log off, the timer will be stopped at that, at that uh, moment when the system kick off. And then when you log in again, it will automatically start. Will it restart or will it continue with we'll the, the time? We'll, we'll resume from where it left. OK, it will resume. Okay. And probably the final one there is what's the relationship of tasks to jobs? So the jobs are the jobs you're doing for a client. It might be a BAS, it might be wages, it might be it's it's a specific activity. Whereas the tasks are the components that make up that activity. What is it that you need to do? You need to complete the bank recs, you need to uh, check the general ledger to the GST accounts to make sure the you know whatever it may be um, and then you have checklists within the tasks to help you go through and make sure all the things that you need to complete that task are done i think that's about it yep okay so i'll hand the screen back to to kate um, Okay, well, thank, thanks everyone for um, attending these sessions. We do have a little bit of hiccups here and there, but um, certainly uh, we, if you've got questions, uh, you know, post the webinar or want to reach out to us, please do not hesitate to give us a call. Um, there are other webinars that will be, uh, 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 will be available in the next couple of days or next couple of weeks. Uh, do check out on our website and let us know if there's any topics that you want to hear, but otherwise also tune into those webinars as well. Kate is, um, is available for questions. If you need, she's putting up her screen right now. So you need to reach out to her and uh, if you wish to have a chat with her or um, uh, questions about the, 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 the system or you can also reach out. I'm not too sure. Ali is an independent. So, um, but I'm sure you guys have contact uh, contact directly. But otherwise, get us. Let us know. We'll reach out to Ali and we will get answers for you if there's it's necessary. Thank you. And Thanks again. One one final thing, Tiana. Just one thing that popped up. The job name and the task name don't have to be the same. I just did it for ease of showing you here today. Just for sometimes you might want to make it similar so you can match things. That's all. Just convenience. Cool. Okay. Hand it over to you if there's any further. So thanks guys for attending this webinar. And again, so many of you um, have sort of through the whole webinar. Um, we hope that we're delivering some value through to you and giving you some insight on one of the ways you can use Gov reports to build value um, practice. If anybody has any further questions or we weren't able to answer any of your questions sufficiently during the webinar, please reach out to us. Um, Ali and I talk all the time. Um, I'm not uh, unfamiliar with OPM. I do know how it works. So I might be able to help you out. And if I can't, I will drag Ali back into the conversation. And of course, if you are already a member of GovReports and you'd like to speak to me about practice improvement, then part of your membership with GovReports does allow you a half an hour conversation with me on a topic of your choice. 
So please reach out. Remember that if you think GovReports can help one of your friends in business, uh, we have a fantastic referral program and we will give you an account credit as a thank you if one of your colleagues um, gets a membership with us. Have a great night. Uh, enjoy the new year and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks everyone. Have a good night. Thank you, everyone.